everybody. How's it going? Well, the original intro for this was, I think I shot this on Wednesday because Taz did his uh, Mr. Taz mania himself did the Wednesday pump. And I was getting ready to upload this video and I saw something I wanted to edit and I deleted the video somehow. So I've had to re-edit this whole entire video and I realized my intro was not as good as it should be. So anyway, here's the new intro to the video. It's Friday, by the way, and very psyched that it's Friday. It's been a long week of just work. It's been fun. Uh, I got into that slab of Osage Orange and I've got footage of that. I managed to get, let's see, one, two, three. I managed to get five handles out of the Osage Orange and I thought I was only gonna get two. So that's coming, but I just wanted to Wish everybody a happy Friday and get pumped for the weekend and let's get outside and let's do something. It's rained for four days straight here. So I am ready to get out in my sloppy backyard and do some work. I've got a fence to build. So anyway, uh, this video is um, mainly cutting a wedge by hand. So let's get into it and have a good Friday. This is going to be uh, the easiest. Uh, there are some tools that you're going to have to have, though. You are going to have to have a vise. There's really no way to cut a wedge unless you have a bandsaw, a little benchtop bandsaw, and this will get it. That'll get it done. This tends to waste material. I mean, it doesn't waste it, but basically, if you have a three-quarter inch thick board and you're going to cut a wedge out of it, you're going to be taking that middle portion of it because you have to cut this way and you have to cut this way and uh, there's basically half a wedge left on either side. So anyway, uh, here's, here's what I do. So basically, I'm just going to eyeball this, but I'm going to take, I'm going to eyeball center and I'm just going to scribe a center line and it doesn't have to be dead center because your, your measurements are going to be either side of center. You're not going to pull from one side and measure in. So I'm not really concerned if it's dead on three eighths, three eighths and three eighths is three quarters. Um, so now I've got uh, a center line on three sides. Basically you want to take the gap here and the gap in the center and the gap over here and guesstimate what the, all that's going to be and maybe add a little bit, maybe add an eighth of an inch. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to oversize this wedge just because. So let's go, let's go, let's go two and a half. And we'll go two and a half over here. Oh, that's what I it was a darn square. So we're going to go three eighths. So what we're going to do three eighths is what's half of three eighths? Come on. Three sixteenths. Yeah, you're right. Very good. So we're going to take three sixteenths either side of center. So I'm just kind of laying this out on either side, here and here, and then I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing the same thing over here, 3 sixteenths, and 3 sixteenths. Now, can do that. If you're good at doing that, if you're not good at doing that, I like my little straight edge. So now you can see what I'm getting at. These guys right here, these uh, these sides, you'll just have to utilize them. I hate wasting wood, but there's just really, if you're going to do it like this, there's no way around it. Other way. Other way. And 
And basically, I'm just taking this point right here of my 3 8 where it breaks over the side and my straight edge and bringing it down to my center line. Like so. I might make that just a little fatter. Okay. And I really like these Japanese or Japanese style saws for the initial cut. And this is. So. I'm going to carefully, with my Japanese saw, start this cut, and I'm going to start the cut on the top. And kind of use my thumb as a fence to guide this puppy. And I'm not really, I'm not really putting a lot of pressure on it. I'm just wanting to make sure I hug that line. about holding this at an angle. I just mainly wanted to score that and get get that get a saw kerf in on this line very accurately. Okay, now the fun begins. Now we transition to a modern saw. Which cuts on the push stroke, not the pull stroke. But we're still just, we're not getting crazy with this. letting that saw curve from the Japanese saw guide this saw and then using your thumb as a guide for the saw and then changing the angle of this saw as you go down to match the angle that you drew there. not trying to do this and this side this side and this side all in once what I'm doing is I'm tilting my saw at an angle trying to hold this line over here trying to create this line and stay in this curve and that if you're doing this right saw is just going to naturally drop in there. I don't like sawing when I don't, I'm not looking at my line. And I also don't like the piece moving while I'm trying to saw it.
this is what this looks like. Now you can see this kerp is wandering off, but that's to the waste side, so I'm not really worried about that. And I can actually correct this when I turn this around. But here is what this side looks like. And you can see my little Sharpie line looks pretty good. I'll take it. Can you see it? So now we're turning it around and we're going to finish this guy up. Crank it down. Let's see if I can correct this. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Then to finish up, once you meet these both both of these sides meet, then you want to try and hold this as horizontal as you can to finish square at the bottom of the curve. Corrected, corrected that guy. We were going the wrong way, but we we brought him around, and it's going right down the sharpie line. Um, that's why I don't like to try to take both sides at one time because it's really if you can't see this line, and that's what that resulted from. My saw was kicked out just a little bit, but if you can't see this line, how are you going to cut it accurately? So you start one line at a time coming down like this same way with the other side and then once you get everything going right then the saw is going to drop into the kerf and and you'll end up with a good cut so let's see if we can do it as good or better on this other side oh i love walnut it's it's such a good tool so now again, we're going to start over here, and this will just follow this on the way across. Since I've got a, a saw cut, <coughs> I'm just letting I'm just letting this saw do the work. Somebody said it's all in the fi filing. It's all in the filing. It is. I file these. And at home, I don't have a fancy English cabinet maker saw at home. I have just a regular old vintage Diston. Um, that's super sharp that I do the same thing with and I also put um, curves in the handles with <laughs>
basically what I'm doing now. There we go. I'm just extending that and until it, it pops out of there like that. So not too bad, not too shabby. Let's see how long that ended up being. It ended up being two and seven eighths. Let me see if I can. <laughs> uh, two and seven eighths. Roughly. And uh, how thick are we? We're we're right at three eighths. We're right where we wanted to be. You can see my. Can you see my layout lines? Maybe a little bit better over here. There's my center line. So. Continue. Good. Hey, I hope you all are doing very well. And just keep it rolling. We are making progress. Stay kind. And I will see you on the weekend.